Hey everyone, this is Paul from Ortho with Valpal. Today I want to talk about a winging scapula and how we diagnose it clinically here in the office. Now, Kevin here is 54 years old and about three weeks ago was working out, doing a regular workout routine, doing some elliptical if I remember right. Yeah. And afterwards he just, you know, started to do some arm circles and kind of, you know, externally rotated and abducted the arms at the same time. Felt kind of an unusual sensation deep inside here, kind of a popping type sensation. And soon after that, noticed that he had a hard time lifting his arm up and having a, just kind of this dysfunction around this region here, okay? So the nerve that makes the serratus anterior contract, which is the muscle that helps to hold everything in place, is the long thoracic nerve, okay? And uh, our suspicion is that he overtraction that and it caused some, some problems there. So what I want you to take a look at here is his active range of motion. So we're gonna have him go ahead and lift the arms up, both of them straight up over the top. And you're gonna notice that he has this winging right here and then back down and I'm gonna have you step back for a second and you'll notice that, go ahead back down. You're gonna notice that as he lifts the arms up, he has a little harder time with this one, okay? So let's go ahead and try that again. Lift both arms up straight overhead. Lift that one up all the way if it goes all the way. Good, and back down. And now you're gonna lift your arms out to the side this way. Okay, and go up as high as you can. If that other one goes all the way, let it go all the way. Good, so we have a hard time with the function of this arm here. Now, go ahead and relax your arm. First thing I did with him is I checked his reflexes, his sensation, and his distal strength, and everything looked good down here. I then assessed his rotator cuff and the function of his shoulder, so passively, he has great range of motion um, in all positions. We don't have a problem with that. Okay, um, and then next I jumped into some special tests. So I want to just simulate doing the wall push-up. Okay, so we're gonna have that arm right out here. So that one can go down actually. And I'm gonna have you hold there and don't let me push you. Okay, so I put my hand here and I give him some resistance. He has a hard time holding against me. He can't keep that scapula up against his thoracic cage. As you can see, it's just really jumping right out. All right, the next test that I like to do is called the scapular assist test. So because his scapula is not staying in place, to keep his rotator cuff in the right position to be optimally working and to keep that acromion back, um, I'm going to do that for him to see if that improves his range of motion. If his range of motion improves, then it tells me that is a serratus anterior issue, all right? So we're just gonna lift this arm up. I'm gonna have you go up on your own and Nope, leave that one down. Yep, you're gonna go up, see what that looks like. Okay, now come back down. And now I'm going to assist him. So I'm gonna take that scapula and I'm going to hold it in place and just kind of help it. So go ahead and lift that arm up again and lift up all the way up. And it's a lot cleaner as you can see, all right? So just keeping this in place puts that rotator cuff in a better position to work. So we suspect a long thoracic nerve palsy and uh, no problem at the cervical spine, no other problems elsewhere, the rotator cuff is fine. Um, so what do we do with this? Well, we're going to do some taping techniques because we know that his shoulder functions better when his scapula is down. So we're gonna try to tape him down while he's doing therapy activities, while we try to load this arm and do some strength training. We're going to do some serratus activation exercises and we're going to do some demonstrations and some videos coming up soon on uh, what we're going to be doing with that. We're going to try to maximize the strength of the rotator cuff while activating the periscapular muscles. And we might even attempt to do some NMES to the medial border of the scapula just to get a little stability while he does some arm exercises out here to see if we can keep it in place. If that all works and um, you know it seems like having that scapula down is beneficial for him, we might put him into some sort of a scapular stabilization shirt so that he can wear that during the day and just be more functional while he's doing his everyday activities. So this is what a serratus anterior palsy or a long thoracic nerve palsy looks like. Um, and um, these typically will get better over time, especially if it was a tractioning type of episode like it was with him. 
Other reasons people can develop a long thoracic nerve palsy would be um, a virus of some sort, or it could be trauma, okay, to the rib cage, um, or just an overtraction. Um, and so with his case, I think it was this episode of external rotation abduction that kind of stretched him a little bit. And if the head happens to be on the opposite side and we're here, that could cause enough traction to develop a long thoracic nerve palsy. So hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you like it. Um, we have many more videos to come and uh, be sure to subscribe. Thanks.